Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we're going to start out with the Bitcoin chart here on Bitfinex. Apologize about not having a lot of updates recently. Been busy with some other things and also it's been a really slow news cycle. I expect that coming up very soon as this budget impasse comes up and Trump comes under pressure to actually do something in his first 100 days that things are going to start to get exciting. But things have been pretty boring. We had another smackdown of the precious metals. We're going to look at that when we get to the gold charts. But um, this action here in Bitcoin is very, very interesting. This price that we're at of 1333 is a high we recently touched. Uh, very significant in that that's higher than the gold price and it, it seems to be the place where a lot of the I won't say intervention but a lot of shenanigans has gone on when when Bitcoin has threatened to surpass gold now you can see that this is a very strong pennant formation it really wants to go higher but the big problem that we have here is a really serious problem with arbitrage so you can see here that we were printing 1325 at Bitfinex where we only have 1245 at Bitstamp. That's a big arbitrage opportunity. And anybody who knows anything about markets knows that arbitrage is the ability to wipe out inefficiencies, uh, profit from inefficiencies in markets by simply buying and selling simultaneously in two different markets. <laughs> Now, why would it be that you wouldn't be able to do that with Bitstamp and Bitfinex? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know the answer for why OKCoin is all the way down here at 1060 which is now almost $300 below where Bitfinex is trading. And we know the reason there is you simply can't, it's impossible to arbitrage the OKCoin market because the Chinese government won't let you remove any Bitcoins from their exchange. So they tip their hand, uh, their all-out suppression uh, of Bitcoin. Of course, it's going to fail. All it's going to do is just make China irrelevant to cryptocurrency markets, uh, which they deserve to be irrelevant if they're not going to allow them to trade freely. But as to why there's no arbitrage between the Russian exchange, well, I would say on the Russian exchange, it's not as much uh, probably an ability to get your bitcoins out of there but to get your money out of there so it's going to be very difficult to get the money out remember that you know you have to have fluidity uh, in both the money uh, and the bitcoin you have to be able to deposit bitcoins very easily and very quickly and withdraw bitcoins very easily and very quickly you also have to be able to deposit money very quickly and very easily, whether that's Russian rubles or U.S. dollars, whatever the take. And you also have to be able to withdraw those currencies. If you don't have those abilities, then arbitrage itself becomes risky because you have to risk a certain amount of your capital uh, just by attempting the arbitrage. And a shutdown on that, uh, normally arbitrage uh, profits are very, very thin because they're guaranteed. So if we had total liquidity, for example, between Bitfinex and Bitstamp, uh, total liquidity being the ability to get Bitcoins on or off and dollars on or off, both of the exchanges very, very easily and quickly, then even so little as a $2 difference between those would be quickly arbed away because it's free money, it's an automatic profit. So that's how markets work that uh, they self-regulate and uh, markets across the world are arbitraged so that prices stay in line. It's just a, a natural mechanism of free markets and it's not working. And that should tell you one thing and that is that governments, because they're the only ones that really have the power, are interfering with free markets. That's the bottom line. That's uh, what we're going to see when we look at Venezuela. The problem is evil governments, specifically evil people in government, who do not want to allow free markets to operate. The reason they don't want to allow free markets to operate is because free markets can expose them for what they are, which is corrupt and evil people who want to have control over other people's lives and want to steal money. So these arbitrage numbers are very disturbing. Uh, I do expect Bitfinex to make a new high, but I really don't know how we're going to have any follow-up 
in any of the other markets. You can see 1336, that's that old spike high with tremendous intervention right afterwards. And we're getting very, very close to that. So it may be tonight that we get that. Uh, the other exchange that I use to actually withdraw or sell Bitcoin and withdraw dollars is Coinbase. And you can see that Coinbase is not anywhere near approaching that old high that they had of 1350 and they're sitting at 1250 so some really strange stuff going on in the Bitcoin market uh, it may all be resolved when everything goes to the upside uh, just to show you a comparison of okay coin you can see just not even close to old high so really strange stuff like I said this is what happens when governments interfere in markets now uh, the gold market is also a market that governments interfere in not so much because uh, gold is actually one of the assets that central banks use to uh, prop up their currencies and to manipulate the value of their currencies but we can see here with the gold spot chart in different currencies this is what this is in the monthly chart in the great british pound and you can see that uh, the bull market is fully intact uh, if we take a price here in British pounds of about 250 back in 2004 uh, we've gone from there to basically a fourfold move to the high and we're getting close to that so uh, gold has done its job in the British pound let's look at some of the other major currencies and then we'll look at some of the minor currencies here uh, gold spot in Australian dollars you can see that uh, even more so gold appears to be forming uh, that cup and saucer formation wanting to go higher you can see a fourfold move or so uh, from back in 2000 basically a threefold move from 2005 and definitely wanting to go into new highs so people who invested in gold to protect themselves against their dangerous and profligate government in Australia have made the right decision especially if it's physical gold uh, gold in the Canadian dollar you can see that here we go we're getting that same cup and saucer pennant type breakout formation that's forming up it's it's a big big pennant it goes all the way back to the uh, central banks capping gold back in 2011 after that tremendous run-up and so this is a big pennant when you get a pennant that big you probably will get a breakout of similar proportion that could launch gold to five or six thousand uh, Canadian dollars next chart uh, we will look at gold in the euro spot uh, the euro has been somewhat weak lately and same sort of pattern not quite as strong but definitely a bull market no question about it a very strong bull market heading into some type of pennant resolution and uh, then we want to look at gold spot in the Japanese yen and uh, the Japanese yen is uh, also a very weak bankster currency and you can see from 2001 or so uh, 30,000 yen and uh, we're now up at 139,000 yen so uh, again the Japanese did well if they invested in physical gold to protect themselves from their own government now the last one of course is the US dollar and you can see this is by far the weakest of the charts it's actually at a stage here in this uh, pennant uh, that's actually a year or two behind the other countries so very interesting uh, but we've talked often about how the US is probably going to be the last man standing in this gigantic game so uh, also back to the cryptocurrencies real quick before we look at uh, gold in the other uh, minor currencies you can see here we've got this crypto market cap here crossing the 30 billion dollar mark as I said in another update I expect it to go to a hundred billion dollars in fairly short order when it does that and that could be now that Bitcoin looks to be making a, a new move um, so it wasn't that long ago that we were at that 10 billion market cap for all cryptocurrencies now you can see Bitcoin itself is at 21 billion uh, ethereum's at four and a half billion dollars ripples over a billion 
Uh, Litecoin's making another big run. It's over, it's over $600 million market cap. Dash has a $500 million market cap. Ethereum Classic. So you add the two Ethereums together, you have almost $5 billion in Ethereum. Uh, we've got this NEM coin, over 300 million market cap. Another 300 million market cap for Monero. $200 million market cap for storage coin. Just a coin for doing storage. And you can see a couple of others above $100 million market cap. So it continues even though there's manipulation, even though there's corruption, even though uh, there's all kinds of shenanigans going on. The amount of money flowing into cryptocurrencies and out of fiat currencies continues to rise. So let's get back over to those uh, secondary gold charts. I want to start off here with, and the best I can get here at bullionrate.com is a five year. I can't get a longer than five year chart, but we can see the pattern here really clearly in the Argentine peso. Uh, this is a very clear pennant formation forming up here. It looks like uh, gold is going to go up again versus the peso. You can see that as just as recently as um, July of 2013, gold was 6,000 Argentine pesos and now it's approaching 20,000. So People in Argentina who invested in physical gold in the summer of 2013, uh, they already have a 300 plus percent gain on their investment. So anybody who tells you that the gold market is dead is absolutely crazy. It's, uh, it's booming and especially in countries where the currency is is just dying now Venezuela is one that is just really really bad and I'm gonna read a story on that here in a second but you don't really get that from this chart and that's because this is using their official exchange rate and we know from dollar today that the official exchange rate is an absolute joke but even based on their official exchange rate uh, people who own gold have already doubled their wealth in uh, that currency and it's really tenfold or twentyfold um, there are people, if they're still in Venezuela, I personally wouldn't stay there if I had any way of getting out, but we know that they're also trying to prevent people from leaving. It is a socialist hellhole, and uh, this is the latest article um, from theweek.com, Venezuela's socialist hell. And uh, this is from Pascal Emmanuel Gobri, probably a Venezuelan. And, of course, we have more protests. People are literally, uh, not figuratively, but literally starving to death in Venezuela. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is when you have an evil, corrupt government that suppresses free market forces. That's the story here. That's what I've been talking about for nearly three years now. It just in this Venezuelan story is that the government, the evil socialist government of Venezuela is not allowing markets to operate. That's the problem. That is that is the main problem uh, because you can't, if you don't have free markets, there's no way to determine supply and demand. And that's the bottom line. So let's read this. Venezuela cannot wake up from its socialist nightmare. The Venezuelan opposition just staged a massive protest against the government, which the government repressed with military force, leading to at least three deaths, the New York Times reports. Detained opposition activists say the authorities tortured them, according to Reuters. Meanwhile, across the country, people are starving. Venezuela, a beautiful oil-rich country, once one of the wealthiest nations in the southern hemisphere, is only sinking further into economic devastation and chaotic corruption corrupt authoritarianism. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro increasingly looks like a Bolivarian version of Vladimir Putin holding power through corrupt patronage, fear, and the smothering of alternative voices and power centers. I would not compare him to Putin. Uh, at least Putin is smart enough in his corruption to take over uh, very valuable companies and you know we just had the story that Venezuela seized the GM plant there. But at least Putin uh, allowed his oligarchs to amass 
large amounts of wealth before he either completely stole it or uh, you know extracted certain amounts of it but uh, Maduro is not nearly that bright everything Maduro touches uh, turns to crap there's no other way to put it the protests were triggered by further moves by the executive to consolidate power Maduro has banned a main opposition leader Henrique Capriles from holding political office meanwhile the economy keeps rotting Venezuela has topped Bloomberg's economic misery index a benchmark whose title is self-explanatory for three years running the economy shrank by 18 percent last year with unemployment at 25 percent and inflation slated to be 750 percent this year and 2,000 percent the next according to the International Monetary Fund Venezuelan government statistics are of course made up so third-party figures are more reliable but its other statistics show that the real extent of the misery and and it makes one stomach churn over the past year 74 percent of Venezuelans lost an average of nearly 20 pounds each reports the economist the military controls the country's food supply and the result is widespread malnourishment and of course corruption Venezuela's hospitals have more in common with those in Aleppo than those of an oil-rich emerging economy. As The Guardian reported last year, children are suffering from malnourishment for the first time in the country's modern history. There are outbreaks of scabies, a disease easily prevented with basic hygienic practices. Hospitals are running out of even basic drugs. Caracas is the murder capital of the world. Corruption has infected the country wholesale, even at at even as it has created a new class of kleptocratic oligarchs linked to the security agencies. Put all this together and it's not just that the economy is doing terribly, the whole Venezuelan society is breaking down at a fundamental level. We are witnessing the collapse of a once proud beautiful country with a rich culture and countless assets. It's truly heartbreaking. This was wholly preventable and I blame socialism. Venezuela's previous president Hugo Chavez set the stage for the country's destruction by spending Venezuela's oil money on social programs designed to boost his popularity even as he set about wrecking the country's assets, expropriating most valuable private companies, sometimes to turn them into bureaucracies and sometimes to give them to friends, implementing price and retail controls that ensured people wouldn't have access to basic necessities and capital controls that caused inflation to rise, shutting down alternative voices in the media, Putin and Erdogan style and winking at top to bottom corruption. When global oil prices declined, the house of cards fell. Of course, rich world socialists will quibble, quibble over semantics and say that Chavez's policies of nationalization, price controls, capital controls, and authoritarianism are not socialism. This is debatable. No, it's not debatable. It is socialism. That's what socialism always leads to. It has to, because it doesn't work. What isn't is that the collapse was wholly self-inflicted and it was obvious from the start to anyone who was paying attention and was grounded in reality that this would be the outcome. You didn't have to be a conservative to know this would end badly, although in fact conservatives saw it first and were louder about it. And now it's Venezuelans, especially the poorest and more marginal among them, who are paying the price for this madness. Let us now hope that they and the rest of the world re will remember for a long time. I hope they remember, but I don't think they will. And remember, these people voted Chavez into power. Now, I don't think they voted Maduro into power. I think they want to remove Maduro, but they can't because the elections are corrupt and, and the government is completely lawless down there now. And uh, I just wanted to say, I mentioned before uh, the story about our intervention in Syria and how Trump had uh, fooled us by uh, joining the neocons in their plans for world domination. And I firmly believe that. I, I don't believe any time there's a story about children being gassed, you don't even need to investigate it. That's obviously just a story to create outrage. Uh, but there's enough outrage right here, in my opinion, to do something. But you see, we don't do things for humanitarian reasons. They'll, they'll always try to tell you that a war is for a humanitarian reason. 
but it never is. It's for economic reasons or for corruption or whatever. Uh, I would fully support uh, a military ouster of Nicolas Maduro and removing him from power and uh, having free and fair elections. Uh, I, I would support that um, because I think that people are now dying in Venezuela because of this socialist madman. But we know that evil governments do what they do because they're run by evil people and those people are interested in controlling people. They don't care whether people live or die. All they care about is their power. That's why we're seeing this uh, failed arbitrage opportunity in Bitcoin, although I think they're going to be overrun. I think it's going to be happening soon. That's why we're still seeing the manipulation in the prices of gold and silver. I think that gold is telling us that they're going to be overrun. I think they're going to be overrun pretty soon. And I think, think things are going to start to get pretty exciting going forward here. And we'll talk to you next time.